you can figure out any type of BPV if you can remember a few simple things. This includes Ewald's laws. So the first law says that the direction of nystagmus is directly correlated to the canal that's being stimulated. So this is important when we're doing our positional testing. Imagine this scenario, you are doing a Dick's Hall Pike on a patient, and when they get into position, instead of seeing that rotary or torsional nystagmus beating towards the ear that's down, you see pure horizontal nystagmus. Well, that's a good indication to us that the crystals are in the horizontal canal and they're not in the posterior canal like what you're testing for. Ewald's second law says that fluid flow or otoconia flow moving towards the ampulla or towards the cupula and utricle is excitatory in the horizontal canal. Fluid flow, otoconia flow away from the ampulla or away from the cupula and utricle is excitatory in the posterior canal. So if you keep that in mind, you will be able to picture exactly where those crystals are located inside the vestibular organ in which canal and in which ear. So I'm gonna give you an example of where these laws come into play and when we can use them, especially when it comes to the horizontal canal, because that one can be tricky, right? We get nystagmus in both positions of our roll test. One side might be a little bit stronger than the other, or sometimes they may look equal to us. So how do we figure that out? Let's picture our horizontal canals. All right, so if we have free floating otoconia, all right, in the back portion of the right horizontal canal, when you roll to your right, the crystals are gonna move towards the ampulla or towards the utricle, creating an excitatory effect. Right, so this ear or your right ear would be more neurally active, creating a strong geotropic nystagmus. If we go into our left roll, those crystals are now moving away from the ampulla or away from the utricle, causing an inhibitory effect. This in turn technically makes the left ear more neurally active because we're inappropriately shutting this canal down or inhibiting it. This creates a geotropic nystagmus beating towards the left, which may not be as strong. So what if they were equal, right? What if they look the same on both sides? We can't tell the difference of which one looks stronger, which one doesn't look stronger. This is where we can employ the bow and lean technique. So if it's those free floating crystals and you're just having transient nystagmus with your roll testing, if you were to have the patient bow forward, you know, pretty far, what happens is the crystals are going to move towards the ampulla or towards the utricle, creating an excitatory effect. So you'll get nystagmus beating towards the affected side in the patient. So being able to understand Ewald's laws, you can pick apart your testing and you can have a great idea of where those crystals might be located in which canal. Let's apply this idea of Ewald's laws now to apogeotropic nystagmus in roll testing. So in this case, you're, if you're in your roll testing with your horizontal canals, when you roll the patient to one side, you're gonna get persistent, you know, it doesn't seem to end longer than a minute nystagmus beating away from the earth. If you roll them to the other side, same thing, you get this persistent nystagmus beating away from the earth. Patient may be symptomatic, one side may feel worse than the other. If we can't tell or the patient can't tell what's worse, let's think about this using Ewald's loss. So we'll use the right horizontal canal again, except now instead of those crystals being free floating in the back portion of the canal, they're stuck to the cupula or to the sensor in the ampulated portion of the canal. So when you roll the patient to your right or to their right, the crystals stuck to the cupula are heavy and they sag that cupula away from the utricle, away from the ampulated portion of the canal. This creates an inhibitory effect, effectively shutting this canal down, making your left horizontal canal more neurally active. This produces an apogeotropic or nystagmus beating away from the earth. Now, when we turn them to the opposite side, that cupula is heavy. It's gonna sag instead of away, it's gonna sag towards the utricle, right towards the ampulated portion of the canal, even though it's in the ampulated portion of the canal, and it's gonna create an excitatory effect. So here, now this canal is really excited. We're gonna get nystagmus beating again, to away from the earth towards the more neurally active canal. 
So typically in your rule testing, you'll see nystagmus or symptoms stronger when the affected ear is up. But again, what if they look equal or the patient can't tell the difference? Here we can use bow and lean, but you'll see a good response if you lean the patient back. That's because the way that the canals are actually situated, they're kind of pointing more, if you're using your arms, pointed more towards yourself. When you lean the patient back, that cupula that has those crystals stuck to it becomes heavy, deflects towards the utricle, and you'll get nystagmus beating towards the affected ear. So use those laws, put them to good use, and if you can memorize them, you can figure out any type of beep and BB. Good luck.